Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Hashtag Behind Relationship Goals. I am not Bones and she is not Fofo. I knew that you were gonna say something, but I just didn't figure it was like that. Anyway, we get straight to the podcast topic because it is extremely juicy. Mm. So what we are going to talk about today is exactly how Bonizi and I invested for the first 10 years that we were together. Ooh, interesting because we both started dating while we were super young. We both started working at a pretty young age. 22 years old. And, and I started working at 14 actually. There's a lot of places that our money could have gone or that it actually went to. Yeah. And even just the topic itself I think is taboo because we've said it before on the podcast that talking about money here in the Philippines mm -hmm. and amongst uh, family members and close friends, it's not exactly something that people just dive into na parang wala lang. Oo, sabi nga ng parents ko dati, you never discuss money with anyone. So I thought that discussing money even with my parents was kind of taboo because of that notion. Yeah, I remember I spoke to Lauren, Bonizi's sister, about money. And the very first time that we did it, I wanted to help her out. And she wanted to get also help. get other get help and get advice or another opinion. She became emotional only because yun nga, you oh. were always told, don't talk about money with other people. But because of that notion, from my experience, parang it's hindered us from getting ready. So a lot of my siblings, including myself, we came across money problems simply because of inexperience and the lack of conversation when we were younger. So that is what we want to do with this podcast episode. We want to share our stories and hopefully you guys pick something up or at the very least you're entertained by it. So when you first started working Fofo, what was one of the purchases that you were looking forward to buying? Okay, so when I finally started working, I was out of the house and I needed a car because taping is in different locations and going with the service was a hassle because you would have to wake up around two hours earlier mm -hmm. and then you would have to wait for the set to pack up at the very end. So, nabibitin yung tulog mo and yung pahinga mo. So, I thought to myself that getting a car of my own would be a, good a value investment. Yeah. So that was, I think, the very first big purchase I got with my money. And I remember exactly what it was. So my one of my very first investments when I started working was an orange Ford Fiesta. Oh, I remember this car. <laughs> it was so cute. I absolutely loved it. It was heavily tinted. My maniac tint, but not my choice. <laughs> because the most important aspect of that car is that it was secondhand. Yeah. So I think at that time, the retail price of a Ford Fiesta or that particular model was around 650000 mm -hmm. And I think I got it at around maybe five hundred twenty or 530000 Why did you pesos? get it so much lower than the original value? Because it was secondhand. And the cool thing is that it was secondhand and it was being sold through the dealer. Mm -hmm. So kahit pa paano, I had the certification of the dealer that, oh, okay, this car is still in very good shape. And uh -oh. true enough, you know, it was only 1,500 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So, so konti pa lang yung natatakbo konting, niya. Konti pa lang, okay. But I already shaved 130,000 off the price. And para sa akin, that was such a big deal. I mean, you're not going to pick up 130,000 pesos on the floor. So I think that was a huge saving. So for me, that first investment was a good deal. For me, when I first made my big purchase... Mine was also a car. I got my first ever car, but I got it brand new. So mm -hmm. that's the big difference with our first big purchases. You got your second hand. I got mine brand new. And the reason why I got it brand new was because I didn't know you could buy second hand. Hindi ko alam yun. So these were things at a young age na syempre hindi ko naman alam. And I was just going with the flow of what my parents told me. Yeah, but you know what, Bones? I think that was a value purchase for you as well. Mm -hmm. Because you were not into cars at all. No. I you just, knew nothing about cars. The only thing that I wanted to make sure that I needed with my car was space in the back so that I could bring all my stuff for taping. That I would be comfortable enough to rest there if, you know, we were on the way to a far location. 
But those are the only things that I had in mind. I didn't think about would I save money if it was gas or diesel? Uh, ano ba yung mas efficient na kotse para sa akin? Wala yun. Space lang talaga ang nasiisip ko. Yeah, so when I look at Bonizi's situation, I see that it was a value purchase for her and it was the best investment she could make at the time simply because she wasn't aware. you were That wasn't your thing. Yeah. That, that industry or that purchase or being a car. That wasn't something that you were aware of or knowledgeable of. So buying brand new gave you peace of mind that, okay, everything is going to work. Because yeah. for me, buying secondhand, there's so many things you have to consider. Uh-oh. You have to consider, paano kung may hidden repairs siya? Paano kung may bangga pala siya? Paano kung may sira siya? How do you know how to handle that or how to fix that? But- how do you move the title from the first person to your name also those little things they do matter and if you don't have the mind space and mental preparedness mm-hmm. to do those things now if ever mangyari siya, are you ready to take care of it properly then it's always better to go brand new so to each his own everybody's coming from different situations so a good investment for one doesn't necessarily mean it's the same for another Mm-mm. i remember that when i first completely paid off for my car. I cried because I was so happy that I didn't have to pay anything monthly anymore. And I actually, I was super proud that I could pay for that in three years. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So from the car, one of the bigger <laughs> investments, uh, let's go a bit smaller, but okay. still quite pricey. I bought myself a MacBook Pro, which was expensive. I would say this was maybe around 50K. Okay. 55K. Okay. And at first, I wanted to buy it just because I had never really owned my own computer ever. And being a gamer and being such an avid tech fan, I mean, this was the dream. But the (laughs) dream doesn't necessarily mean it's a good investment right away. So growing up, did all of you na magkakapatid, did you guys share a computer? Yeah, exactly why I had never owned anything. Because everything was always shared. Kasi ang dami nyo, so it was more smart for your parents to just get one computer for everyone. Yeah, and they couldn't afford giving everyone oh, a computer. Man, oh and even gosh. one computer. <laughs> Impossible. But yeah, so that was a dream of mine. And like I said, your dream is never necessarily a great investment. Yeah. More often than not, it isn't. It's something that you want more than you need. However, it is possible to turn it into something good. And I think I was able to do that because... When I got it, the only reason I wanted it was because of the games and being able to say, oh, I have my own computer. But when I got it, eventually, I actually became organized. So instead of writing all my calendars on notebooks and my to-do lists, it slowly migrated into my laptop. And Mm -hmm. at the same time, that's where I started monitoring my expenses, my money. I started storing all my documents digitally. That also paved the way for an opportunity for me to learn how to start editing photos and videos. And you also started blogging at that time. Oh yeah, no, I started blogging, yeah. You had your blog, the Mikael Daes blog. Yeah, I had like the written blog, MikaelDaes.com. So before the vlogs, you would actually write about our trips. Yeah, I would. But you're not with the photos. Wala pa ba? Ako pa yung photographer. Ay, tama, tama, tama. Wow, I need to dig up that blog. Yeah, it's somewhere on WordPress. Posts. Okay, so how about you? For me, I guess the biggest luxury purchase that I ever had was my designer bag. My Balenciaga. Your Balenciaga. And that was a bag that I had been eyeing for the longest time. And parang at that time, people were saying, oh, you need a bag because, you know, you need to... I don't know. I guess it was like a way of look social. Look a certain way. And I was like, why do I need to buy this? But eventually I found a bag that I really, really liked, and it was the Balenciaga motorcycle bag. And I saved up for that. Oh, for I didn't know months. that was a motorcycle bag. It's called the motorcycle bag, I think. Basa, basa yon. So I saved up for a couple of months for that, making sure na okay. Meron dapat akong savings, hindi dapat isang bagsakan to. So at least kay papano nung time na yon. I had a system of how I wanted to purchase things. So that, at that time, was 89,000 pesos, which is a lot for a bag. Like, it was so much money, but I really wanted it, and I made sure to save up for it. I still have that bag up until this day. Yes, you do. You do. I know. I'm aware of that bag because... One time when Bonizi and I were out at night, she had the bag. I had a drink with her. Okay, I said, Bonizi, here's your drink. Tas nabangga ko siya. 
and I completely drenched her bag. Pinaliguan ko yung 89,000 peso Balenciaga ni Bonizi. Buti na lang ako yung crush niya. <laughs> Pero nakita ko yung ano eh, nakita ko yung tension dun sa mukha niya. Wala pa yata like, one year yung bag ko nun. Po, bones, po. wala pa. And then tayo, parang two, three months pa lang tayo nagkikita. Oh my God. As in talaga mo na sorry, I was like, hindi ko, hindi ko naman alam na Balenciaga, hindi ko alam na mahal. Leather. So I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pero yung mukha niya, she was like, and at that time, I was like, oh my gosh, I spent so much money on this guy. It's just gonna like pour all this drink, this alcohol all over it. Oh my goodness. So that was a funny story. I just remember that now. I completely messed up your investment. I'm Salamat sorry, ka, minahal pa rin kita. Joke. Tama, tama. That could have been a deal breaker. Let's be honest. It could have. It that could have. That could have been a deal breaker. But oh my we gosh. look past material things, Fofo. Okay, okay. So, okay. So tell me now, Bones, 10 years later, um, how do you see that investment? I think at that time, I thought it was a worthy investment. But if I'm going to be honest, I could have bought a cheaper bag that would have lasted just as long. Yeah. But like right now, is there resale value to it? The resale value for my bag Maybe, since... Uh, more than 50% possibly? No, definitely like maybe 30%. Oh, okay. of the price because I had it fixed. I had like a patch na pinalitan yung leather. So it's definitely not its original state anymore. And that's why the value of it is like bagsak presyo. Okay, right so overall, would you grade your investment A, B, C, or F? I would say it's a B kasi nag-ROI naman ako. I used it for a lot of things like for work and stuff like that. No, maybe a C. It's a C. I don't, yeah. It's yeah. a C. It's not a B. It's a the, C. the bag was not the reason you got the work. So the bag did no. not help you ROI. No, it was a C. A C investment. And <laughs> it wasn't worth it as much as I thought it would be. Okay, okay, cool. I do not have to give my opinion. That's your investment. By the way, I'm really thinking of selling that bag. There you go. Okay, back to me. A horrible investment that I made was after my MacBook Pro. And that was an iMac. <laughs> I know I mentioned this already in passing. I think this is the time that the iMac was released. So much hype around it. And I was already enjoying my games. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the 27-inch iMac. And I was like, oh my god, ang ganda ng monitor. Ang ganda ng screen. Wait, wait. Let's take a pause right here. I think the reason why you wanted to get that computer at the moment is because that's what I was using at that moment. You were using a 21 a inch. Because I was using it for school. Yeah, but they came out with a newer one, which is more powerful. And then I thought, oh my God, ang ganda siguro magdota dito. <laughs> so that's what I did. And I bought it. And it was the worst purchase ever because the only thing it was useful for was playing Dota with my face too close to the screen because I had a super small table. And apparently yeah. when your screen is that big, you have to sit like two tables far. Super Kung hindi, parang mabubulag ka. So, parang nabulag ako. Very slightly. Buti na lang, 2020 ka pa rin eh. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was a horrible, horrible investment. But luckily, I was able to sell that eventually. Mm -hmm. So, later on down the line, I was able to sell that and recoup my costs a little bit. And I think before we proceed, I think it's really important to note that for you and me, reselling our things, especially things we want to dispose of or replace, is a great way of keeping our value. Yeah. It, uh, let's say a Mac, an iMac is like 100,000 pesos. Okay. And because those Apple products tend to retain value so well, even after a year, you could sell mm -hmm. it at just 30% off and you get 70% back. That's 70K. Yeah, and that's pretty cool because before, I had this thinking that if you bought a certain gadget, you would have to use it until it was completely broken. And unusable. And unusable. And that's... That was my way of thinking about gadgets talaga before. And sabi ko, ah, may sira yung screen. Gagamitin ko pa rin to kasi binili ko to. Kailangan masulit to. Oh, well, for me naman, it was a bit different. Kasi even five years later, I have some gadgets that I could sell for just 50% off. Half price. And mm. it's still such a good buy, especially if you take care of it. Mm. And for me, I super take care of all my gadgets. And I tend to keep the box of all gadgets. All other items that I purchase, I throw away the boxes. Yeah. But for gadgets, kasi, I think that the perceived value is higher when you give it with all the instruction manuals, yeah. the box, all the accessories. So more often than not, that's what I do with mine. 
Kaya kung makikita nyo ang mga closet ng mga gamer, punong-puno nyo yan ng mga boxes, ng mga gadgets yeah, nila. Because, because gamers do they, that. When they upgrade their PCs, then they know, ah, okay, I can sell the old material or whatever device was in my computer. Oh, oh. Gamer habit nga pala yung yeah, sa akin, no? Yeah. Gamer, what's up? Mm. Bon easy, your turn. Okay, so I have a second purchase that I made when I was Miss World because I didn't buy a lot of things during that time, but one thing that I did purchase, and I think it was my only really expensive shoe purchase, was I bought a pair of Stuart Weitzman boots, which... I actually did not tell Fofo about. I went on and bought it and I didn't let him know like this is the time that we were trying to fix my finances and making sure that I was on top of everything. But I was like, I've got to buy these. I I need these shoes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> no, I had Big that words. I had that thinking at that time because we were traveling a lot. Uh, we were going to a lot of cold places and I realized I needed boots that look nice but kept me really really warm and, and had a lot of zeros in the price tag yeah they were like 36k yeah okay they were 36,000 and it was a very heavy price for my budget at that time but grabe ano bang nasa isip ko noon at binili ko yon grabe <laughs> okay so assess bones assess was this purchase worth it i would say before the pandemic it was definitely worth it because i have used it in a lot of our trips, na pumunta tayo sa malamig na lugar, it's kept me really warm. But now, I haven't been able to use it since the lockdown. Yeah, for me, however, I'd like to give my two cents because I actually really like those boots. Yeah, they're so really nice and sexy. I think that they were very functional for Bonizi, yeah. in fairness, because lamig and si Bonizi. Mm -mm. And the many times that we've traveled to colder places, she's been able to use it. So for me, it was form plus function. Yeah. And you were able to take nice photos with that pair of boots. So para sa akin, I think that was a better buy than the Balenciaga. Definitely a better buy than the Balenciaga. Because the Balenciaga, but, medyo walang function yung Balenciaga. Yeah, like you could carry stuff, but it was more of yung dating niya yeah. rather than what it would be able to do for you. And the Stuart Weitzman boots provided both of that. For okay, you. yeah, I like that. I like those boots. I like that. So this is, I think, I'm leaning B or A. For my rating for this Gotcha. Purchase. Okay, I would agree. I would agree. B Maybe plus. like an A minus. B plus. Okay, B plus na nga. <laughs> the Ford Fiesta, I think at that time, was an A. Okay. Honestly, I mean, in hindsight, maybe B plus, but at that time, because I was just starting out, major limited but any knowledge got that time. Yeah. A. And then the MacBook Pro, maybe B plus. Mm -hmm. B plus. Okay. I think there, I could have gotten a more value purchase yeah. there because I didn't really need a pro model yet. Because <laughs> you weren't editing I yet. wasn't editing yet. <laughs> but eventually, I was able to start editing on that specific yeah. laptop. And then for the iMac, that would easily be an F minus minus minus. <laughs> Triple Hindi F. talaga worth it. Horrible. Horrible, wow. horrible. Okay, next one. I like this. Moniz, you having fun? Yes, I am. I like this. Okay, this next one is very, very interesting. An airline around seven years ago came out with a fly all you want promo. Mm. It was 12,500 pesos. And at that time... Per Bo person. Per person. And Bonizi and I already loved traveling. Yeah. What I did without thinking <laughs> is that I bought it on the spot. For me and Bones, I spent 25,000 pesos thinking, Yeah, kaya natin yan. Magpa plano tayo, magpa plano tayo. But the thing is, I already knew full well na hindi ko hawak ng schedule ko. Uh -huh. Ang my hawak ng schedule ko was GMA. I was under contract. And then when they needed me to make a teleserie, I needed to be there. So, sakto. Nagka teleserie ako. Kaya hindi niya nagamit. Ang fly all you can. Not even once. It was more like work all you can ang peg mo nun. Okay. <laughs> Kasi syempre, telesere, Monday, Ooh, Wednesday, naman. Friday, taping, Saturday, Sunday, promo. It was impossible to fly out. Yeah. And then, parang for that promo, you had to book it in advance. So, a couple of weeks in advance. And, yeah. And there were only certain days that you could fly depending on availability. So, kung wala pa yun dun sa available dates na meron ka or biglang nagka-work ka, it just wouldn't work out. Yeah, and I've heard a couple of other stories from relatives and siblings where they did the same thing to similar packages, mm -hmm. fly all you want, tas yun pala, hindi nila naisip yung schedule nila. Yeah. So sobrang sayang, hindi talaga nila nasulit. At para masulit yun, you need around maybe two trips or three trips on it. I think 
though we were able to use it for maybe like a leg no. of our trip, hindi ba? We both. looked into it. We were not able to use it at all. Sayang. So, <laughs> I will grade that now triple F. <laughs> Aww, sayang lang. Time was really yung kalaban natin nung panahon na yon. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Bones, your turn. Okay, let's go into another big purchase. When I was around 22 years old, I purchased my first ever condo and was it worth it? Honestly, no. It wasn't worth it. Okay, explain. Because this is really interesting because more often than not, when it comes to real estate, almost everyone universally would say, ay, okay na investment yan, okay na investment yan. Pero syempre, when you get into it, and you start investing into a condo or a house or a lot, there are so many nuances that can affect how good of an investment it really mm. is. So Bonizi, take okay. it away. My mindset at this time was I need to buy property para hindi sayang yung rent ko. And this comes off from one of our past episodes where we talk about rent versus buying. Yeah. That was my mindset. And I akala ko, sige, if I'm gonna drop 20k in rent, bakit hindi ko kaya yun sa loan or sa bank loan? Tama. So I looked into a condominium and it was a fairly good price for a three-bedroom. And since I was working, sabi ko, sige, kaya ko to because in the next year, I'm probably gonna have two shows and I'm probably gonna earn this much. But the main problem was I was thinking, baka, baka, baka magkaroon ako ng work, baka magkaroon ako ng ganitong klaseng income. But since our line of work is no work, no pay, hindi naman sigurado yun, di ba? True enough, when I did purchase it, hindi pumasok ang work na inaakala kong papasok. And this was before Miss World. So, hindi talaga ako sure sa path na pupuntahan ko. I didn't know where my career was going at this point. So, for me, it was definitely, it was a tough hit on my bank account. Second was, I didn't do research on the area, on the developer. So, while I was living there for a certain time, I came to realize that maybe this isn't the area that I actually want to live in because it didn't feel efficient for me getting to work and to school. It wasn't a good location for Bonizi because it was always out of the way. It was out yeah. of the way of ABS-CBN and GMA. It was usually out of the way of all her locations. Mm-hmm. At the same time, when it was rainy season, konting ulan lang, bumabaha. At nagta-traffic agad. And nagta-traffic siya during off hours then, Which was a huge negative only because we always leave the house during off hours. Yeah. For taping, we leave at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. And for it to be traffic at that time was a big deal. Kasi syempre, if there's anything you don't want to happen, you don't want to be late during taping. Mm-mm. So I I wish I did more research, honestly, on this place. And at the back of my head, I'm always thinking, I wish I didn't buy this piece of property because it just didn't feel so lit to me. And I would rate that an F because it was my own fault na hindi ko tinignan ang lahat ng bagay na dapat kong tignan. I was just looking at it from one angle. Being so young, I could have asked more people for advice. In contrast, I was also able to get my own condo a year into working. This was pre-selling pa lang, so I was going to be able to pay a very low monthly mm-hmm. until it was turned over. And compared to Bonizi's experience, mine was actually very, very good. Yeah. I would say that this investment was an A++. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. The biggest difference, I think, between me and Bonizi was that I had people around me to give me a bit more advice. Mm. I was able to create a more informed opinion before putting my money down on that condominium of choice. So I would ask them, because there are a lot of people who I didn't know what makes a good condo. There are a lot of people who are If you look on Google, on Instagram, if you go around, driving around, going to the and malls, dami, dami so many ngayon. people selling, so many people flying different kinds of condos. So my question in my head was like, how do you know ano yung okay? Laging sinasabi, oh, you buy it for X amount and then in several years, sobrang taas na ng value na yan. And I was like, so how do you know? I'm pretty sure not all condominiums are like that. And for me, ah, when I bought a condo, I wasn't even thinking of 
you know, selling it again or having it appreciate. I was just thinking, oh, I have a permanent just a place, place that I can in. live in for the rest of my life. Oh, yun lang na sa isip ko noon. Oh, so yun nga, I think that you would have been able to help yourself a bit more if there were more people around you who oh, were able oh. to give you different perspectives. So I was lucky because at that time, I had just graduated and all my friends got into different industries. Some of them got into real estate, some mm. sales, some developers. And then I also had a couple of relatives who were in the business for a longer time. So, ang dami kong tinanong. Yeah. And then eventually, after some time, I landed on the condo of choice. And it turned out to be a good investment. And that's no credit to me. I think all that credit goes to everybody around me who helped make me more informed and more knowledgeable mm -hmm. about that purchase decision. So, it's a big deal, especially getting into anything that's new. Your first purchase of anything for the first time, I think it's very important to get different perspectives. Yeah. And some people will sound right, some people will sound wrong, but it's, it's up nice to, to you. It. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you to figure out what do you agree with. Do you agree with what he said? Do you agree with what she said? So that was the predicament I was in. So I had to make my choices and make my decisions. And luckily, with a bit of luck, I also was able to make a good investment for that. You know what's so cool nowadays is you have communities like on Facebook where you could ask a question and you could get so many different perspectives and points of view from people. Like there's a group I'm a part of on Facebook called Home Buddies where people share their homes and how they upgrade their homes. But there are also people that ask questions on, I need advice on buying property. Can you guys help me? So you have people like lawyers, people that have bought multiple properties, people that have more experience in these things, share their opinion or share different stories that help you form your perspective on how you're going to buy a piece of property. Actually, it's kind of funny, Bones, because that moment of yours with buying your first condo was maybe, let's say, 10 years ago, 9 years ago, right? Around. Yeah. Yeah, around Roughly. 10 years ago, yeah. But interestingly enough, nowadays, there's another problem on the other side, which is analysis paralysis, which is sobrang damning information. You can go on YouTube and you can absorb like a week's worth of videos. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you don't know how to choose and decide because there's too much information. Mm -hmm. about information it. overload. Na. Info overload. So I think that's another dilemma that the current generation faces. But just similar to you, I think that you need to know your limits. And eventually, once you have enough information, you need to eventually make that decision. I think some people, they keep on getting information, but they're afraid to make the final decision. Yeah. So parang you need it, to have that. There's ano eh, parang two balance. ends to a story, right? Yeah, like, you need to balance it. With me, I had no information whatsoever. I like that. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the condo situation? Mm, for the condo situation, yeah, just do your research and figure out what works for you, I guess is the best option. <laughs> okay, this is super fun. I mean, we've only gone through a handful of investments. And we obviously made a lot over the past 10 years. <laughs> Big and this small. might have a part two, but anyway, let's get into something else. So another investment that I made that I realized was a horrible investment. And I didn't even realize it was what it was at that time. It's only in hindsight. So I bought a G-Shock watch before. And it was, you know, around five digits, maybe like 12.5. I think that's how much G-Shock was. Finally, like, but some more than 10. Yeah. Of course, you'd think, oh yeah, a watch, a timepiece, you need it, you're gonna wear it all the time because, duh, you go out and then kailangan mo kang uh, put together ka, especially during press cons and all these things. I never used that watch. <laughs> I never used that watch. I mean, I knew it already in my heart that I wasn't a watch wearer. This is a watch that I wear to sleep, only to sleep track, and I never wear it out. Yeah. Ever. So for the G-Shock, as cool as it was, it was super trendy at one point. Everybody wanted one. Nadala lang ako. But that was 12,500 pesos down the drain. So yeah, I could have sold it for a bit of money, but I think I lost it eventually. Did I lose it? I did lose it. Did yes, you did! So I did lose it. Hindi ko na nga sinusot na wala ako pa. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. So, hindi mo na ibalik ang investment. F, 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 F. Hindi man triple F, quadruple F. F, 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 F. Quintuple F. You get an F. So, that sucked. That sucked. Um, if there's one thing Bonizzi and I hate the most, it's wasting money that you worked so hard for. 
and making those kinds of purchases i think these are life lessons to be honest with mm-hmm. you because you learn how to make better decisions and obviously that particular g-shock moment it sounds very trivial yeah. at the moment parang wala lang but in hindsight that's a lot of money oh yeah that's, that's definitely sayang. a lot of money you could have bought sayang. more food with that for me yeah dude like two months worth of food for bonizi oh gosh okay anyway uh bonizi what about you When I was younger, my parents were very interested in investing in different kinds of land. But what was interesting about this land was that we actually invested in cemetery lots. <laughs> Can you imagine cemetery lots? Because back in Olongapo, they had just opened like a new area in the cemetery and they were selling like different plots of land. And we were advised to purchase early on kasi tataas yung value. We purchased these in 2011 and then we recently found the papers that showed us that ah you have cemetery lots or lots in the bonary in the cemetery in Subic. Okay, wait, before you continue that, this is super funny. So, just this year, Bonizi and I decided to organize all of our documents digitally and physically. Mm-hmm. And I literally found it at the back of a folder and I was like, "Bonizi, I think you own these lots in a cemetery. Is this still? Do you still have this? And she was like, "Oh my God, I think I still do." So she called her tita, and she was like, "Ante, do we still have this?" I said, "Oh, naman na kala na sa you parin yan." No, but it's not the value niya. I was like, "Magkano na siya?" I was like, "Oh my God, true me plan na yung value niya." And we just didn't know, Bonisi. You have a bonisery. <laughs> you have a bonery, Bonisi. Yeah. So it's just really interesting because I didn't really think that we still had these pieces of land, and it was just sitting there the whole time growing. Okay, I think there's a lesson to be learned here. Okay, it's cool that you bought that. It's cool that it tripled in value. Mm-hmm. But the more important thing is that it's important to always have your data organized so yeah. your data in terms of things that you own things that you've invested warranties receipts so bonizi and i have learned this throughout the 10 years Mm-mm. in our first few years there are so many things that wala nang papeles oh, oh. diba mahirap na halungkatin yung mga papeles nila pero especially uh, over the past few years since we got married or since we started preparing for our wedding we've really made it a point to have a box an organized box where all documents go warranties and receipts and then we make digital copies and we Ooh. put it in the cloud and then it's there because it really helps especially when you want to do something with it let's say you want to liquidate or sell yeah. some of those boneries or those <laughs> lots it sounds really weird when you say boneries but yeah it's pretty cool like we have a a box full of documents and contracts For the cars, we have one for the lots and receipts. So yeah, it's just nice to like lay things out. Para when you are looking for it, madali na lang siyang hanapin. Mm-hmm. So let's say someone wants to buy a current car that we own. I know exactly where to go to get the OR, a CR, and the important documents. Mm-hmm. Yung casa service, yeah. service papers to prove that it was well taken care of, and things like that. Since I bought property before Fulfo, of course, I moved into my own place ahead of. Fofo, and that meant that I needed to buy my own furniture. So at this time, I was like, "Let's go for the trendy furniture. Let's go for the one that looks the best." And I went for that. But I also realized now that I spent way more than I should have. Probably for our couch, which we still use the man up until this day, was four times more than the usual couch. Than the usual couch, and I did not have to spend that much money. Even for my drawer, it's the same. Situation. She got a drawer that was four times more expensive than the average drawer, and the crazy thing is, they didn't age as well as you would think. Yeah. So you would think if the price is four times more than the usual furniture, that it would last longer and it would deteriorate less. That's not true. Not so, always the case. Yeah, that's not always the case because when I bought furniture, I bought IKEA. <laughs> and my God, IKEA is not here yet in the Philippines, but it will open soon. But a lot of our pieces here are from IKEA because I bought them, and they are so good. They're easy to maintain. 
They and, look good and they don't deteriorate as fast as Bonizi's pieces. And they're so fun to put together. I'm the construction worker when it comes to <laughs> all our IKEA furniture and here. And I'm at the home. assistant. Yeah. <laughs> so just to compare, Bonizi bought something that was, let's say, worth 50,000. And then the IKEA piece that I bought was worth 12,500 pesos. Yeah. Mas maganda yung itsura nung IKEA five years later. Yeah. Iba talaga. Pero. Sana mabenta ko pa rin yung couch na yon at yung drawer na yon in the future. Yeah. I think a story that can be told here is that whenever you move into your first house, mm -hmm. Bonizi, your first condo, you wanted to make it really nice. Yeah. So you had this urge to really spend a bit more mm -hmm. even if it was beyond your means. Yeah. Pero ano yung ending nun? It wasn't exactly the best value purchase. Yeah. And you can always level up naman. Slowly. Like, you start small and it's okay. Like, it doesn't have to look the pinakabonga right away because throughout time, you will figure out kung ano ba talaga ang gusto mo sa isang bahay, what you really need for your space. And the key word here is need because everything that we probably want initially, not all of that sticks with us for the next 5, 10 years. Yeah, and I think that journey of upgrading and slowly seeing your space where you live. It's so worth it. I mean, seeing that slowly upgrade yeah. over the years, super fulfilling. And rather than starting big right away, yeah. tapos, there's nowhere <laughs> to go. There's nowhere to upgrade anymore. Parang na. nababawasan yung joy of upgrading. If there's one thing that we upgraded that I'm very, very happy about, it's our coffee corner. Because we started with just a pour over station and a, a kettle. That's it. And we slowly grew from there, from our cups to our equipment to the coffee that we drink. It's and we been a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we didn't do it abruptly. We didn't all of a sudden buy the best and most expensive coffee equipment mm. and coffee paraphernalia and cups. We did it slowly during our travels. We would go to a coffee shop mm -hmm. and say, Ay, ang ganda nito. And then we would buy it. Yeah. And then some people would give us gifts because mm -hmm. they know that we were into coffee. So it's nice that slowly our coffee corner would grow and become nicer and become eventually something that we're so proud of. Yay. And because we're always there every day, <laughs> every morning, and then after lunch, we avoid it pag sunset na. It's become super duper sulit. Plus, my memories pa because we're the ones who helped grow it to what it is. Oh, it's so nice reminiscing about our coffee journeys, but also thinking about the ups and downs of our investments throughout the years. That was soba. <laughs> the best investment that we got was soba. Soba, doba. You're an investment? Hello? <laughs> investment to our life okay but with that we hope you guys learn from some of our stories i really enjoyed sharing this uh, reminiscing oh, on, she's hugging you reminiscing on some of our past past uh good and bad choices hopefully you guys picked something up or at the very least hopefully you're entertained this is soba sleeping on my shoulder i'm fofo and this i'm bones is bones and this is hashtag behind relationship goals. You can catch us on Spotify as well. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.